Women are caring and women are capable. But that quality often is overshadowed by their maternal instincts, and that is wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to make sure that women are just as appreciated in society as their male counterparts. And this is why we are proud to oppose the motion that this House believes that feminist movement should oppose feminist action for women in Western liberal democracy. Well, let's start off by going through some of the things that just came from side proposition. First of all, we have a serious issue with the way that they would do this, with the way that they define affirmative action. They define affirmative action like primarily as something that had to do with female quarters in, for example, Parliament, or these things. Well, we say that affirmative action is something that has to do with the more general term, something that you know simply means that we should compensate for some disadvantages that certain groups in society have been faced with. For example, we, may, we mentioned the black rights movement. We don't think so? that we need more black people in parliament. That doesn't mean that we don't we need to give them affirmative action. Um, thank you. Another first point they said, that the process should be equal. They said something about, you know, we, we need to have the process of women going uh, into these things, for example, parliament and colleges and jobs and that kind of thing, more equal. Um, but that it should be like an organic thing and it should be just because that we respect Hillary and we respect Margaret so. Thatcher, thank you. But we respect Margaret <coughs> Thatcher and Hillary Clinton because what they did was overcoming some challenges they shouldn't have been faced with to begin with. We don't think that that was completely fair. We think that that analogy simply states that they had so much difficulty like becoming who they were and that shouldn't be necessary. And yes, we believe that you know the process should be fair, but it really isn't, and that is the whole problem Point. with the proposition case. And thank you. And I also said that it wasn't wasn't spurious. For example, they, they, they gave us the idea that um, that is like it's that simply women. We, we're going to think that women aren't good enough. We're going to think that if we give these quotas to women, that women are going to feel inferior to men, that women are going to feel as though they so. didn't really deserve the place that they got. But we say that this is really unfair, because in, in the first place, they are put at a disadvantage. This is why we're having this motion, because that they have an inherent disadvantage in society, and this is to be accommodated, not ignored, by simply saying that they will be inferior if we help them out with the things that we, like, in so. a historical context, have uh, like done to them. Thank you. Now, before I go into my contentions, I'd like to say that our burden is not to show that all cases of affirmative action are, use, uh, are useful anymore, but that it is useful in some cases, and that the feminist movement shouldn't oppose it entirely. So on to the first point that I have about um, harms of inequality. And the first up point that I have to that is the problems in the status quo. Well, we see uh, in, for example, um, the expectations to women. We see that women are expected in like in, in many regards to stay at home, they have a certain gender role, they should stay at home, they should watch out for children, they have these like caring uh, things about them. But before I develop this point, yes. Without quotas, fifty percent of college graduates are women. What makes you think that women are still being forced into traditional gender roles, especially in Western liberal democracies? Well, we're not saying that women are in all cases forced into these gender roles, but it's not like it's a huge, uh, it's not like it's a huge surprise that I'm saying that in many cases and in many regards, people uh, see women and there is a social comment on them, like belonging in, in, in the kitchen and those kinds of things, like, and that they are meant to, to do certain things. And we think that these gender roles are still prevalent in today's society. Whereas we, we think that, for example, if you uh, see uh, movies and that kind of thing, like sports, we see that it is pr like primarily dominated by women, by men. We, if you see like an action movie or something, it's not really the hero in that movie that is a woman. Well, this is most often because that we have this idea that men somehow are superior to women, so. women inherently, even though that women are equally <coughs> capable of all those things. And well, thank you, women. We don't think that women have like an inherent disadvantage or that they are inherently incapable of doing those things. We think that is because that the general view upon women and the approach to the gender roles that they like should be forced into, that we think that this is the case. And we don't think that it's fair because women are equally capable of doing all those things. And like this is really important to stress that they 
they, so. it's not really so. because they're inferior, no, thank you. And also the second sub point that I have about why does inequality matter? Well, we see that when we remove the stereotypes of, for example, you know, how women should be, we don't necessarily only remove the stereotypes of how women should be. If, because men like, are expected to like, act in certain ways as well. So we remove the stereotype and the gender roles of how women are supposed to act in society, like they're supposed to stay at home, they're supposed to do all these things. Well, we also remove the fact that men should do all these things, men should go to work, men should be you know, the, the, the breadwinner and those kinds of things. Well, we think that women could do that as well, and the men could, and the man could, should stay at home. We don't think that this is a problem. We, should, we think that people should be able to do the things that they want to do because they want to do them, not because the society tells them this is what you were born to do because you have a certain gender. Doesn't make any sense to us. No, thank you. And we also think that in the workplaces and those kinds of things, like we should have people who are best suited for the job. We shouldn't have people like just put there because of quotas or because of these things. We think there are other ways of affirmative action, and that's what I'm getting into in my second point now. Why affirmative action actually benefits? What is uh, affirmative action so really? No, thank you. We think that it's. As I said, compensation for disadvantages. And we know that women are inherited disadvantages in, in society today because we have all these like patriarchal views of how they shouldn't be working, they shouldn't be doing all these things, because this is like some sort of idea that we have. And especially between, uh, for example, we see also, and thank you, that it shouldn't be necessarily a hard thing to do or a hard thing to accommodate. Uh, in, like, in addition, we can give you the example of colleges reserving in America, reserving spots for African American people because that they are, like, had an inherent disadvantage at some point, no, thank you, and then they were accommodated for that with affirmative action because they needed that boost, not because they were inferior. We don't think that black people are inferior to white people or, uh, in that sense, but because that they were like, disadvantaged historically, which then makes sense and, like, to, to pull this through. And also, we think that it works because you're directly counteracting something that is inherently wrong in society. So if you're directly counteracting the problem with, for example, women, women's inferiority, like saying that there are different things. For example, um, I'd like to give you the example of like traditional uh, the symphony orchestras where they actually previously had like different interviews and those kinds of things where they would um, cast these people, but now they have like medical tests and those kind of things, what are they actually capable of? And this has turned out to be uh, showing that women actually do have a more prevalent field in those like orchestras because that is leveled the, leveled the playing field for these people. And also that it works uh, because, uh, I'd like to give you another example, for example, forced paternity leave. Forced paternity leave means that women aren't necessarily inherently disadvantaged just because they're women in a workplace, for example, if they are given the opportunity to do the uh, like to to work instead of the man, because the man now has the same like uh, forced thing upon him that he should stay home just because there's a child. So that because that we've told you that harms of inequality do exist, and because that forms of action is needed, we're going to oppose.